welcome to my first Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes videos. I don't know how many of these videos I'm going to make. Um, I'm certainly going to make two. Um, I may make some more. I may might make some that just pop up to show my, my guild my guild mates, my guildies, whatever they're called, my teamies. Um, various tactics and things. But certainly I'm going to make two detailed videos. Um, simply because these two videos that I'm going to make don't exist on YouTube at the moment. There are no comprehensive beginner guides. There's a beginner guide to X and Y and Z, but there's no comprehensive beginner guide. I'm hoping that these two videos will help you um, help you focus uh, your your efforts in what is uh, easily the best mobile game I've ever played, and certainly a very complicated game overall. There's there's a lot to do. There's a lot to choose from, um, and if you if you don't focus on it. If you don't have a clear path to walk down, um, you're probably going to end up leveling up a whole bunch of the wrong stuff and it's just going to be a mess. That's what most people do. I did that to a degree uh, and I'm hoping to, to help you not do that. So I'm assuming by this stage you've at least gone through the tutorial. Um, I'm assuming that you're not a level 85 player. I'm assuming that you don't have a 7 star player yet. Or you may be close to having a 7 star player. But I'm assuming that you're looking for a beginner's guide because you've realised that um, there's a lot on offer in terms of characters. So assuming that's you, uh, let's begin. So in the top left, you can see my um, my rank is 85. That's currently the highest rank that you can have. Um, and as you rank as a player, um, so you can level your characters. So my characters can, you know, I can't be level 10 and have a level 85 character. They, they grow with your level. So it's important that you focus on leveling up. It's important that you you concentrate on the on the elements of the game that are going to give you the most... Um, most experience points, most most XP, I suppose, um, because you you're you're limited by your your own growth. Next to that, along the top, we can see the different five kind of energy and credits. Now, of course, you you probably know all of these already. There's the the cantina energy with the red lightning bar, which uh, helps your cantina battles, and later on helps you with mod battles. Um, there's the regular energy which you spend on your light and dark side battles. There are crystals which the game gives you um, a very decent amount of. I have to say, big thumbs up to the guys that make this game because most most games they squeeze you to to purchase. Um, the re one of the reasons, arguably the reason that this game is is has kept my interest for so long and probably will keep it for so long, is because it gives you enough crystals that you can play the game. As a free to play, uh, free to play player, um, it's going to take you a lot longer to get to where you are. But it's not a drought. You know, some games they just don't give you anything. It's like, right, pay me. These guys haven't done that, and I think that's why. That's one of the aspects that you know really is a double thumbs up for these guys because you know I I have only bought one crystal pack, one of the um, like the ten dollar packs. I bought the cheapest pack and realised that it was it wasn't really what I was gonna I should be doing. We'll talk about that later, but um, big thumbs up to the guys for the crystals. They, they, all of those crystals that you see that are free, but I didn't pay for them. Then we have credits on the right. Now, credits are super important because credits help you level your crew. Um, I don't know exactly how many credits it costs to level a crew, but for example, to get to the six, from six to seven stars, it's a million. Uh, to get from five to six stars, it's half a million. So there's a good few million in credits it's going to cost you to level your crew from uh, one star to or unlock, to unlock level, let's say, um, to seven stars. You also need a lot of credits to upgrade mods. It can cost nearly half a million to upgrade a mod from, from the lowest level to the highest level. And once you reach a certain level in this game, um, it, all, it becomes about mods. Um, it's, no longer which, uh, it's no longer about which characters you have, even though that does play a small, a small significance. It really is about how good the mods are. Um, so credits are extremely important. Uh, but luckily, the way they've, they've set this whole thing up is that they are the credits are farmable. Um, so first off, I'm going to talk through, uh, in terms of these tables, I want to talk through the, the light side and dark side battles. So I'm only going to click on one for now. And that's the light side. And you can see here I've got 1 to 9, all the way across to the end, in normal. And of course, I've got hard shards there. Um, now, there's nothing, there's nothing remarkable for me to tell you in these. You already know about this. Um, hard, hard, sh hard gives you the the character shards. Uh, normal doesn't. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is if you are choosing 
Um, let, let's say I want to unlock uh, Mr. Krennic here, and let's say I need five of these Mark II thingies. Uh, back to gel, I think this is Mark II back to gels. And uh, let's say for for a different character, I need ten of these. Well, you know, will I find my back to gels in a different mission, or will I use this one? It's better to use this one because I'm going to get I'm going to get the possibility of getting two rewards instead of just one. So when you are when you are farming for your characters, have a look at the possible rewards. As you scroll down the to the to the right side, you can see there's they offer a different different credit amounts, shipbuilding credits, uh, sim sim credits, and different levels of XP. Um, these are all these are all fine. They kind of increase as you go along. Uh, but it's important to look for the ones that have the the green dots, so that you're basically maximizing your credits. You know, it's better for me to want this and not get it, and let's say get two of these and one of these because I still need these as well. You know, so have a look about, uh, have a look through the, the the missions that you're farming. But as I say, there's nothing really for me to talk about there. There's no real tips. Um, you already understand what these are for. Now, cantina battles are very important because when you get to the higher level of cantina battle, um, you can also earn um, the omega training mats. So these are the things that you will have seen to help you uh, gear up your characters. Um, as you get into the high levels of Cantina, you're able to earn these Omega mats. Now, most characters, I think, if not all, have an Omega gear level. We're going to look at that in a second. And what these what these levels do with characters is it gives them a special ability. So let's say you know Emperor Palpatine here. Let's say he can he can fire off his 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 uh, electricity and he can stun people. And what 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 do the gear level at eight will do is it will give him like like plus he will get. Uh, tenacity 10% or plus he will get defense down on a on a on a target uh, for two turns right so it adds an extra layer so these are these are really important factors um, and it's it's important to know that these are in here um, because you don't know these are in here because it's all locked uh, but you can get these once you get to the last stage of cantina If I scroll left, we come to challenges, mod challenges, and uh, the aforementioned Cantina battles. Um, all of these tables are basically a way for you to get stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about guilds right at the end, uh, but first I'm going to talk about challenges. Now, when I click on challenges, it shows me that today's challenges were training droids and uh, STR gear challenge. And it shows me all through the week... Um, all of the various different gear challenges that I can get. Now, when I click on this one, it's going to show me. Oh no, it doesn't show me. Can I can I click it and go into it? Yes, I can. Required units. So it's going to show me that I need attackers to complete this. Okay. So I need I need attackers for this one um, to complete this one. Uh, I need healers and supports, and to complete this one, I need tanks. So it's not like you can create your arena team. Um, your main five or six characters and you can come in here and just nail it all the game forces you in challenges to build up um, certain characters um, so you can get certain stuff and these are very important because again currency training uh, training droids for your characters and ability mats which are ever important plus of course a whole bunch of gear that you can unlock as well um the game is really has really uh, done very well in this regard. Uh, it, it you can get stuff from here, you can get stuff from here, from here, from here. You can buy the stuff in here. You get money to buy stuff in here. You can get stuff in here. <laughs> you get stuff in here. You get stuff in here, and you get stuff in here. You basically get stuff all the way through. Um, so so challenges are, are are the first thing you look at. Mod challenges are slightly different. They run along the same kind of philosophy. So, for example, all characters uh, can unlock health mods. Um, again, there's a certain level that you need to defeat these thingies. But we've got all characters, only Jedis, only Jawas, only Scoundrels. And as you can see up the top here, potency mods, offense mods, tenacity mods, critical damage mods. I'm going to talk about all of these a bit later. Um, but each one does a certain thing. So again, as with the challenges, which forces you to upgrade attackers and tanks and healers and supports, 
mod challenges, which you'll get to when you reach a certain level, force you to create teams. Okay, Jawas, Jedis, uh, Scoundrels, so on and so forth. Yeah, so the game is forcing you to upgrade your entire roster rather than have you focus on something specific which is what causes most of the problems with the character building and which is why this video is being made because the game purposefully makes you upgrade all of this stuff that you don't really need uh, but it's very good because it gives you more of a better understanding so to unlock these mod challenges you must first complete mod battles okay so you can see here it's using cantina energy uh, and it's a very very similar concept to cantina battles you simply have to go through unlock them all they don't cost a great deal, and once you've completed them all, you're able to get into your mod challenges. And we're gonna we're gonna look at mods a bit later. Now, if I scroll all the way to the right side, yeah, so we've got the shard store. Now, the shard store opens up once you have uh, upgraded a character to seven stars. Okay, and the currency for this are basically um, shards that you don't need. So if I had General Grievous at seven stars, every time I earned one General Grievous shard, I would be able to, to uh, uh, exchange it for shard currency. You could see I only have eight in here. Um, and you can get some pretty decent stuff in here, some pretty hard to find stuff in here. Um, but this is the shard store and it unlocks the moment you have a seven star character. Above it we have ship battles. Again, similar to the to the main game it's kind of a game within a game there are ship challenges so again i can earn shards for all of the main ships the capital ships i can earn currencies training droids and ability mats okay now something very important that we're going to look at here are the possible rewards in ability mats and that is this big purple star here called a zeta mat okay it's a zeta training mat these are very difficult and very expensive to come by so it's important that you know these are in here, okay? They are in the last level of ship ability materials. To, to unlock that, you need to have leveled up a certain amount of ships um, to a certain degree, and you, again, need, you need to fight the fights. Um, but now that you know they're in there, make a note of the fact that you can get Zetas in here at the highest level. Again, that's an, that's an important thing for you to know. Like your standard arena, which we haven't looked at, we have the fleet arena. Um, so I'm currently ranked 28. Um, the prizes that you can get in here are, again, pretty decent. I'm, I'm almost getting into crystal level. Um, I can't quite break through right now, um, but I will. As to whether I'll top this, I'm not sure, because, again, I'm a completely free-to-play player, and I know that some people aren't, and they have the advantage. Um, but on free-to-play, you, you can get reasonably high. You know, I'm, I'm getting decent rewards here. Um, And again, these are my these are my people to fight. So fleets are pretty much the same as as regular battles. Um, if I click on my home page, I go back there. Uh, here we have Galactic War, which I'm going to open up tomorrow. Um, it's essentially a selection of weaker to stronger teams that you fight with your entire roster. Um, this is what I'm going to use in tomorrow's video as we're going to go through characters. Um, I've used them all today, so I have to do this this video tomorrow. But Galactic War is something that will unlock for you, and it again gives you stuff. Events come around all the time, and are uh, again just great ways to get stuff. It's a really good game for getting stuff. So let's look at this one for now. This one is Jakku. If I click on I, it tells me I need Night Sisters and Jawas. Well, I don't have either of those guys. I had a little crack at this earlier. That's as far as I was able to get with my units that I have unlocked. Um, I don't have a Jawa team, I don't have a Night Sisters team, so I am unable to complete the last level. Um, it's not so bad because the last level is going to be an Omega map, which I can get elsewhere, but again, they're nice to have because they don't fall from the sky. However, this particular, um, this particular event, Omega Battles, popped around every two or three days, and there are different versions of it. You're, you, you, know, you must have Empire, or you must have Rebels, or you must have you know, First Order, or whatever you must have, but... There's whatever faction you choose to upgrade with or faction you choose to play with, there is an event for you. Uh, these are great. Um, these heroic battles are great. This one I don't have a crew for at all. Lead a team of Ewoks. You know, it's going to give me that all-important Zeta. And it's going to give me 
wicket uh, shards. I like, used to like wicket. I had that toy as a kid. Um, but I can't, I can't, I can't fight this this thing, this thing because I don't have the Ewoks. You know. Um, again, there's that one. There's that one. And these things pop up all the time. Um, and there's certain crew that you can only get in these events. You, you know, Commander Luke Skywalker, R two D two, Emperor Palpatine. Um, some of these characters aren't farmable in the normal light and hard battles you have to get them in certain events and you have to upgrade um certain crew to battle so for example um to earn emperor palpatine shards you need to fight uh the empire with your rebel team so if you don't have a strong enough rebel team you simply can't get emperor palpatine the same with um what's his name grand admiral thrawn you can't unlock grand admiral thrawn from the animated series unless you have a phoenix squad <clears throat> so it kind of works like this you need one to unlock the other but these events pop around every day sometimes there's more than one um sometimes they run monthly but again it's just really great ways to get stuff and as with earlier the game forces you to upgrade things that maybe you don't need but it gives you a great understanding of depth of the game now squad arena i'm sure you've already had a look at i'm currently rank 50 um that will drop down overnight but these are going to be your you know your your kind of your top five players um you put your best foot forward out here and the prizes are, are crystals and uh, arena currency arena currency is very useful because it buys you credits we're gonna look at the ship the, uh, the, the store in a minute um but again the higher you go the more you can get in here it's only these two kinds of rewards um but both are very valuable um my my advice here is don't focus all of your efforts on a great arena team the reason for this is because that's what everybody does everybody works on their best five characters um and when an event comes round you know you don't have a full you don't have a full enough roster you don't have a strong enough roster so you need to keep a good arena team but your arena team really should be made up of characters that are part of other teams, if that makes sense. You know, um, you're not just focusing on one team in this game. You're focusing on on your entire roster. And that brings us all the way around to these two central areas. One is the currency store that you pay for. One is the shipment store. I'll quickly go into the currency store. Um, I'm sure you've already looked at this. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick, a quick opinion on on crystals and buying crystals um in 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 europe and america and many parts of the world not all of them though we are basically cash monkeys for games like this okay so let's 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 click on this one so faction pack for night sister uh, a thousand um a thousand crystals and what it's going to say to me is it's going to say this pack awards two cards worth of night sister shards okay so basically it shows me all of this and i get all excited um, but the small print uh, essentially tells me that it's going to give me two sets of 10 to 330 shards it's likely that i'll get 10 of her and 10 of her right and that's cost me a thousand crystals okay it's not worth it 10 shards is not worth it if it popped up and gave me 330 that's a fully complete character that that i may think to myself well that's that's value for money um but you know about these games already you know about microtransactions if i go into here and i start spending real money on crystals um it's it's a it's a lottery it's a it's a gamble as to what you get but like i said this game gives you crystals and it gives you gives you just enough um and it's more generous than other games and it's why it, i think it's why we stay i think it's it's good um i'm not going to go through all of this in any, any great detail um only to remind you to collect your your bronzium uh with this uh, with this currency here which you just you just keep building up shipments all right now here's where we start to get interesting there are lots of things that you can buy lots of different stores and lots of different places that you can get things so let's go through this in detail because this is a really important place this is the credit store okay and in the credit store i can spend currency okay sorry i can spend crystals so i can buy shards with my crystals all right if i scroll down a little further i can also buy gear with my crystals okay now what you're going to be tempted to do is you're going to be tempted as i did for many months uh, once you get your 350 crystals you're going to go into the store that we were just in and you're going to you're going to buy your chrome pack 
because it's going to give you your 10 to 330 shards of a character and it's uh that's not a valuable way to spend crystals don't don't spend them on on credit packs when you start out you get something like five or six characters you get chewbacca and a a Jedi Consular and I think a Knight Sister as well. You get a few characters. Only a few of them you really need to bother with um, for later on in the game. So your your first thought is to your first thought is to spend the crystals on um, on characters to get more characters. It's better to spend the crystals on the gear in here on your existing characters so that you can then use those characters to complete your light and dark side battles, thus giving you access to all of the characters that you can unlock. All right, that's a much better way of doing it. So my 455 can't buy me many in here. They are very expensive. Um, however, when you look at something like the, the Mark V stun gun, um, the shards for this are just insane. So hard to get. Um, and need, you need so many of them. Same with the stun cuffs. You know, 1,400 crystals. I've got that in a week. It's, it's not a great big deal. Um, but when we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see that there are three or four items that I can buy for credits. Right? Do this every day. Right? Tip number one, even if you've got 114 of them, buy them every day because the value of three of these is way more than 2,700 of these. If I don't need them, then somebody in my guild may need them in, a, in, in part of the guild exchange, which we'll talk about later. But always, every, every refresh, which I think is every six hours, um, if you're awake, obviously, come in here and buy these things. Then we have your Cantina uh, currency. So this is earned by Cantina Battles. Um, and you can see there's a ship, there's crew, and there's training mats. And the crew that you can buy in here, the crew shards that you can buy in here, are um, not unique characters. Um, but according to the game itself, these aren't really going to change. Um, so depending on whether you want to unlock scoundrels, or you want rebels, or you want some empire, or some night sisters, you can come in here and buy these five shards of 400 each. And probably every two days you're going to be in here buying one of these little things. All right? So it's very useful. This is the Guild Store Energy. Now, you can't earn this currency unless you're a member of a guild. Um, and we're going to talk about guilds later. But essentially, the more you contribute to the strength of your guild in terms of daily missions, the more currency you will earn and therefore the more gear you will be able to buy. So again, one of the brilliant things about this game, I'm going to take one of those. One of the brilliant things about this game is that you get rewarded for team play. Um, playing solo doesn't work. You, you, you're you forced to join, join a guild. You don't have to talk to people, of course. You can be a loner. Um, but but it's, re it's really good that they've rewarded, they've rewarded teams so well in this game. It really is a, a, a good part of the game. And I can also buy characters down here as well should I wish to it's not a problem at all here is your arena currency now again we've got characters in here but we've also got credits right so for 2000 arena currency I can buy 1.5 million credits for 600 I can buy 10 capital ship um, training whatever I guess that's training mats are they training mats I'm not really sure what they are um, things that you need <laughs> so you could buy 10 things that you need. If there's a character in here that you really, really want, then, you know, crack on with it, spend it on them. You know, you've got to get at least one player to, uh, one character to level 7 to take part in the in the raids. Um, you've got to get one character to level 7 to get the shard store open. So maybe you'll pump them all into, you know, Grand Moff Tarkin, who's very useful or you know a sarge or whoever maybe you'll pump them all into one of these guys quickly but once you've once you've done that you want to focus this stuff on your credits and your ship abilities okay because you need so much of this stuff it's insane um and you need a lot of these as well for ships if you remember ships will unlock zeta mats and you need zeta mats to seriously improve your characters so um i wouldn't say disregard characters 
but certainly focus on building this, building your arena position up to such a degree that you're able to spend the money on credits and ship abilities with credits being first. Galactic War, again, ships and characters. The shard shop is there. You can buy with ship money or regular money. As you as you um, as you compete in the ships in the fleet arena, uh, you earn fleet credits. So I can now buy ships. I can buy characters, but most importantly, for two thousand, I can buy uh, a Zeta mat. Now I've just upgraded my Wampa, so I've only got one of these. But I am only 30 away from getting this. So come come tomorrow, I'll have another one. Uh, so again, you can get your Zeta mats in here. So it's worth working on your pilots and your ships. Here we have the special currency that you can earn in guild events. Um, and again, you know, the Wampa is a beast, literally. Um, Hermit Yoda is there. And the gear in here is insanely hard to get hold of extremely expensive um, but the point is, is it's all available if you work as a team and you earn this currency you can buy all of this stuff and then there's the shard shop that we looked at earlier so that's a full rundown of the shipment store it's a full rundown of the shipment store and um, where you can get things from now, I mentioned ships a couple of times. I want to look at ships before we go into characters, which are arguably the thing, the reason that you're here. But I want, before I talk about characters, I need to put everything else into context so it all kind of falls into place. Um, to unlock a ship, you need a pilot. Uh, so here's my TIE Fighter pilot. Um, here's Wedge Antilles, Big Stark Lighter. Uh, you'll recognize these ships from the movies. You'll recognize Big Bad Darthy Boy there and his TIE Advanced. Um, you'll recognize that a pilot goes with a ship. If I scroll down here, we can see that some ships need more than one pilot. And if we scroll even further, we can see ships that haven't been unlocked. Here is an unlocked ship, but I've got the pilot for it. And these are the, the four main capital ships. So Akbar, uh, Tarkin, um, Samuel L. Jackson, I, I, can't remember, I can't remember what his name is, but Samuel L. Jackson. It doesn't matter what film he's in, he's Samuel L. Jackson. And uh, Admiral Thrawn. So you get one big ship that leads a group of other smaller ships. Okay, um, This is rather unremarkable, but you need to reach a certain level to get them. But basically, you, you can upgrade them in the same way that you can upgrade a character. Okay, you just, you just, you up, As you upgrade your pilot... Uh, the ship unlocks certain levels, you find the blueprints, same kind of concept. So nothing remarkable in here, um, only for the fact that you need pilots to unlock. And that's a very, very important part of the game. Now here's why we're here. Who to focus on and who to ignore. Let's, let's get on here, hang on a second, there we go. Why is it going up? That's a bit bizarre. Should be going that way. My mouse gone upside down. Mace Windu, there you go. Right, so how did I decide to choose all of these? Right. Well, the first thing you're going to find is as you go through your light and and, uh, and dark side battle, battles, you're going to find certain characters are easier to farm than others. Okay? So, my first advice to you, whether you like you know, the first series of, of films or the second series of films, whichever you're, you know, whether you're a fan of the dark side or the light side, light side or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm sure that element is there for you. Farm Rebels first. Okay? Look for these two guys first. Okay? Wedge and Biggs. They're easy to get hold of. They work together. And they will form the basis of a very important team for you. Okay? Now let me click on Wedge and explain why. As we look at these guys, we can see that they have on the left hand side their, their abilities level and here we have their gear level. Okay, And down here we can see that he's a pilot as well. All right. So what he's going to do is he's going to give me a leader ability for my team. He is going to give me a...
synergy with Biggs. And he's a pilot for one of my ships. So this guy is super duper important and is very, very easy for you to get hold of. All right. So let's just go through him in detail. You've, you've gone through the tutorial already, so you understand the, the, the concept of the different the different attacks. But here's where uh, the advice of someone who's been playing for a little while is kind of invaluable to you. And that is in relation to synergies, player synergies. That's why you're going to look at Wedge and Biggs at the same time. And I have to give a shout out to Game Train, uh, who uh, actually said this in Guild Chat once. And, and it was it was just his throwaway comment about wigs, as he called them, because um, it's Wedge and Biggs. It was his throwaway comment about these two these two characters to another person in the guild, which ticked on the light bulb in my head and made me realise how to how to play this game. Uh, so hi, virtual high five to game train for that. So focused fire. Deal physical damage to a target enemy and inflict defense down until the end of Wedge's next turn. Okay, This attack deals 50% more damage to targets suffering defense down. All right? So, if he has given defense down to an enemy, his second shot on the same guy deals 50% more damage. Red Squadron Strike. Deal physical damage to... All enemies, this attack deals 50% more damage to Empire enemies or enemies with 50% health or more. So, here's the first thing we were talking about earlier when we when we mentioned how, you know, you need Rebels to unlock Palpatine. Because he's he's uh, he's in Red Squadron and he's a, he's a Rebel, His mo most of his damage is against Empire. When you click on Empire characters, most of those guys deal most damage against Rebels. Yeah, so it kind of works as it does in the movies. He's a leader. Not all characters have leader abilities. But here's why he's such a great leader early on. Rebel allies have 30% offense, right? So straight away, uh, Wedge, without doing anything, is making them hit harder. And they recover 15% of their max health and 10% turn meter on a critical hit, right? So, I'm going to talk about critical hits and this sort of stuff a bit later, but whenever a rebel hits hard, he gains health. Now, you already realise that in this game there are healers, okay? because you've got your Jedi Knight Consular. Um, but, when on, but with Wedge as a leader, all rebels gain health when they shoot. <laughs> so, he's a great leader. And they recover 25% of their max health whenever they defeat an enemy. All right. So this guy, he because of this leader ability, he has just turned your rebel team into something that heals itself when it attacks. It's brilliant, right? It's brilliant. Then we have his unique ability. So this is a special ability. He's actually only got two abilities that you can activate. These two are passive abilities. Wedge has 12% offense and nine, uh, plus 9 in speed for each ally with full health. All right, so he starts the game very quickly. And 15% and plus 15 speed for each ally without full health, including defeated allies. Right, he's a very fast character. If Big's Dark's Lighter is present, he also gains these bonuses. Right, so what this is telling you is put these two teams in, in together. And this ability passes over to Biggs, even though Biggs doesn't have that ability. Now, when we go and look at Biggs, deal physical damage to a target enemy with a 50% chance to gain a uh, critical chance up for two turns. Deal physical damage to a target enemy and call an assist. If Wedge Antilles is present, he also assists. All attacks have 70% more critical chance. So, this is a Biggs ability, but he's calling Wedge, right? And he's calling a third player. So, you get three attacks in one because you've got Biggs and Wedge in the same team. 
Big's Dark Slider gains 100% turn meter and evasion up for 4 turns after surviving any damage from an Empire enemy or a critical hit from any enemy. So once again, the Rebel Empire opposition comes into play here and you can see how they advance off each other. So you can see now that having Wedge and Biggs, or Wigs as they're affectionately known, in the same team gives you a great advantage. It helps. Biggs is also a pilot, yeah? and you need to unlock the pilots and upgrade the pilots to make your ships powerful so that your ship fights can earn you credits so that you can buy Zeta mats. Okay? So let's say that I've got Wedge and Biggs, and I've got my tank in there, my Stormtrooper hand, or maybe I've got my, my Pit Raid hand solo in there, or my Chirrut in there. I've got my full team of Rebels. They are all... Actually, that's a full team of Rebels there, apart from Jin. She's not a Rebel. Uh, well, she might be a Rebel. Is she a Rebel? Yes, yeah, she is a Rebel as well. Okay. So, you know, pick any five of these. So, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, Chirrut, you're out. If this five is my team and Wedge is leading them, every time they fire their gun and they score a critical hit, they are going to get a little health boost, and the synergies of these two together mean that it's going to be every time that he fires his um, his secondary attack, he's going to shoot, he's going to shoot, and a random one of these guys is going to shoot. You can clean out a character with basically one shot with these guys. It's very important. Now I've mentioned I mentioned the Omega mats and I mentioned the Zeta mats a couple of times and why Zetas are so important. Okay, now um, I let's stay with R2. He's a rebel. R2D2 is a very useful character. Um, he's one that you can unlock via a special event, so he's not available in the shard store. But he does have abilities that can have a Zeta upgrade. Okay, so you can see here. That the regular upgrades are all taken care of but when we get to level eight it's a super duper upgrade okay so while r2d2 is active all allies gain 10 percent critical chance and 10 percent accuracy while r2d2 is active whenever a light side ally scores a critical hit dispel all debuffs on them all right another one here which is the one that everyone keeps talking about is number crunch at the start of battle, R2-D2 gains 10% max protection for each droid ally, 10% offense for each Galactic Republic ally, 10% max health for each rebel ally, and 10% potency for each resistance ally. At the start of the battle and when R2-D2 revives, other droid, galactic rebel, and resistance allies gain 10% of R2's max protection offense, blah, 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 until he is defeated. So this is you can see that this this Zeta upgrade is above and beyond a regular plus five plus two plus two plus three, right? He is actually granting a whole load of stuff to himself and a whole load of stuff to his allies. That's why these are important. That's why you need to focus on characters like Wedge and Biggs that will enable you to build up your ships, that will enable you to get the ship credits and buy these Zetas. These things are the game changers. Once you've got characters with the Zetas on, you have a lot more power in the arena. All right, so you know, let's look at this guy for example. So, big bad Darthy. I mean, look at this for an ability. Empire and Sith allies have thirty percent offense and have a fifty percent chance to remove twenty percent turn meter when they damage an enemy. This turn meter removal can't be resisted, so guaranteed you're taking off turn meter, of course, if you hit that 50%. Whilst Darth Vader is alive, enemies immediately regain damage over time for two turns whenever damage over time expires on them. So whilst Darth Vader is alive, thanks to this new ability, constant damage is happening on your enemies, right? He applies his damage over time once, and it remains on for the entire time he's on. There's no cooldown for the ability, it just keeps going. That's a big, big advantage. Now, we spoke earlier about mods, and the, the keen-eyed amongst you on the right would have seen the, this element here. 
Mods are available to add to a character when a character reaches level 50. So you, you train your character to level 50, assuming you've unlocked mods, that's when you can, you can add this little area. Now, if I click on my stats tab, it's going to give me General Kenobi's basic, uh, basic information. But it's going to give me, as you can see here, the value I've added from mods. All right, so this is why the this is why mods are important. My general Kenobi is a tank, or all general Kenobis are a tank. They they take they take damage and they direct they they direct fire to protect the rest of the team. All right, so arguably the most important element of general Kenobi's life is protection. I have eighty six thousand six hundred and twenty six protection on him. Okay. And 41,000 of that has come from mods. My General Kenobi can really take a kick in. Right? He can really take a kick in. Um, for, for the way I have my arena team set up, um, he takes almost every attack in the game and is protected by other players. And that allows all of my other characters to fight without the worry of them getting attacked. Um, now, General Kenobi is only unlockable via a, the heroic um, the heroic tank raid. For that, you need to be in a guild, and you need to be in a guild strong enough to be able to do that for such a such a period of time that you're able to get all these shards. Like I said, fortunately, I I, I lucked into a good one, um, and I've managed to unlock General Kenobi. When you do fight, or when you do have your character. Um, we're going to look at this more in tomorrow's video, but you have a green bar and a grey bar. Grey bar is protection, green bar is health. All right. So now let's look at mods, because mods are a big one. Mods really are a big one. Understanding what the mods do, because they cost you money to level up and they cost you they cost you energy to farm. So uh, it's important to understand what they what they're for. And let so let's look at why I've done what I've done for General Kenobi. Um, this may not be the the ultimate setup. I don't know what the ultimate setup is um, because I'm just a guy. <laughs> um, but this guy, this this is not bad for me. It's not bad for me. So first off, we have six mods here, okay. And if I click on the health transmitter, it's got a couple of things here. First, it's got the stats of the mod, and then it's got the set bonus, okay. So if you collect a certain number of the same mods, you get a little bonus. So what this is telling me here is that if I have two health mods on there. I get plus boost in health, right? A 5% boost in health. If I click on that, it gives me all of this information. For 15% critical damage, I need four or 30% is the max, 10% speed, so on and so forth. You'll find your way around this yourself. So essentially what I've got here with my six health mods is I've basically got five, 10, 15% extra health thanks to the grouping of these mods all right so let's let's start here primary stat is a boost on offense then it's giving me tenacity protection defense and health tenacity is the ability to avoid debuffs okay so these are the little red icons that appear above your character when a bad guy um has done a little bit of magic on him okay the higher your tenacity the greater your character's ability to avoid a debuff protection is the little gray bar that goes above um, the health bar defense is your character's ability to withstand gunfire um, and health is health I've given a speed boost with this mod so plus 30 speed and then because he's a tank because he takes full fire I want to focus on protection, defense, and health. Not really too fussed about speed. I'm not too fussed about tenacity. So this is a good one for me. A percentage on protection, a bit of health, a bit of defense, and a bit of defense. Big boost on protection. Big boost on protection. Defense, defense. And he does have some offense there. Again, more protection. Offense, defense, more protection. He doesn't really need critical chance, but it's not like I can remove this. <laughs> it's an element of the mod that I can't avoid having. Um, but, you know, 
this is important, this is important, this is important. More protection, more protection, a bit of a fence, and some speed. Defense, protection, protection, tenacity, speed. So you can see everything that I've put on him is based on defense, right? Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. I need to keep him alive. Now, when you get a mod, let's say this one, right? They start at level one. And if it's a if it's a silver mod or a grey mod, you only see the primary stat. If it's a green one, you see a primary stat and one secondary. If it's blue, which I don't have here. There we go. If it's blue, you will see a primary and two secondaries. If it's purple, you see three. And if it's gold, you see all four. All right. So if you get a gold mod, if you farm a gold mod, and it's gold at level one, so it's level one, and you see all four of these, you can make your decision as to what might be a decent mod, right? So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go into my shipments. I'm going to go into the mod store, and I'm going to make some basic assessments, right? So the first thing I'm looking at is the dot level. So all of these are four dots. Now, none of that's going to be good for me. This may be a great one. Is it speed? No, it's not. That's fine. Um, I want a five dot mod because a five dot mod is the highest. In addition to this, I want my pilots to be equipped with five dot mods because a five dot mod on a pilot helps your pilot become stronger, therefore making your ship become stronger. So let's disregard all of these and let's go down to here. So this is what I was talking about. A gray mod, accuracy, no idea what's gonna appear here as I upgrade it. Defense, it's a speed, so if I've got three more of those, I'll get a 10% boost. But defense, health, protection, offense, nope, don't need it. Tenacity is useful. Wow, this is not bad, actually. Uh, this, is, this is quite a good defensive mod. So tenacity means that I will avoid the debuffs. Uh, it's going to give me defense as a primary stat. It's going to give me a decent amount of protection. Um, that's probably going to go. Up, that's going to go up to at least a thousand. That's a health. That's a good mod. It's a shame I don't have the currency to buy it. Defense, protection, and health. Health, protection. Just ignore the four stars. Potency, tenacity, and offense. So nothing really remarkable in here. Oh, bit of speed. Protection, speed, health, and defense. So that could be a decent one for a defender. So these are, these are the things that allow me to assess my mods as to whether I'm going to buy them. Because, you know, looking here, that's nearly 4 million credits. That's expensive, right? I know that that's... It's a 5-dot mod, so I know that that's going to go to 23.5%. That's the maximum level. When I upgrade to level 3, I'll get a little boost on this one, this one, or this one, right? If this goes up, to, if speed goes up... Goes up to 10, 12, 19, 20. It's worth it. Okay. If it stays at 3, it may not be worth it. So it's a bit of a gamble. Okay. It's a bit of a risk. But these are the things that these are the things that really change the game. So let's let's just look at what each thingy is. Um, right. Generally, generally, light side characters buff themselves. Okay. They give a critical chance up or defense up or something. Generally, dark side characters debuff the enemy. Okay, so generally they will place bad magic on their enemy, and generally light side um, will put good magic on themselves. Okay, generally there are some exceptions to this rule. So Emperor Palpatine, let's look at him. His abilities are based on stuns. Um, and blocks. Uh, he is a big debuff character, okay? Which means I want 20%, 24% potency. I want his debuffing ability to be potent, okay? To combat potency, I would have somebody like Grandmaster Yoda, who has a lot of tenacity, okay? Because tenacity is the opposition to potency. Okay, so the, basically, the higher my tenacity, the less chance there is that Palpatine will be able to stun me 
and stop me having a turn. When I look at Kenobi, we looked at protection and we looked at defense and we looked at health. Okay, Darth Vader, excuse me, Darth Vader, he also needs high potency. Do I have potency on him? Yep. He also needs high potency because he is going to inflict defense down. Barris is going to give me defense up. He's going to give me, uh, sorry, he's not going to give me defense down. He's going to give me uh, damage over time. Barris is going to give me defense up. Sith Trooper is going to give me damage over time. R2 is going to give me burning. The Wampa is going to give me um, health immunity. Grandmaster Yoda is going to give me foresight. He's going to steal buffs from other characters and place them on my characters. Grand Moff Tarkin, is a, he's going to give me... Uh, TIE Fighter Pilot is going to give me uh, buff immunity. So all of these characters, or most of these characters, have a different buff or a different debuff. And all of these mods affect this whole infrastructure of buffs and debuffs. right? And it's really complicated. And that's for another video. That's for tomorrow's video. I'm going to go into that tomorrow when my Galactic Wars have refreshed and I'm able to sit there and talk you through these characters and, and what the buffs and the, the debuffs do. So don't worry about it. It's a bit confusing right now, but tomorrow's video hopefully will help. But it's the mods that make the game. They are the difference. Now, finally, for this uh, video I would like to talk about guilds okay so I mentioned uh, my guild a little earlier and I was very lucky to find myself in a in a good guild um, it wasn't my first it was my second so you know very lucky I, d I didn't have to go through a thousand guilds and I didn't join a friend it was literally the luck um, but let's see what a guild offers you and why you need to join one um, as early as you possibly can the first thing we have here is the guild store. Okay, these are the guild credit credits I mentioned earlier. Guild credits are earned by completing guild activities. So right now, for example, today's guild activity is spend energy in light side battles. Okay, so the more energy we spend in light side battles, I'm currently on 144, the more credits we'll earn. And the more chance we'll have to launch one of these thingies. Okay, so here we have the pit. All right, the pit gives you gear. This particular one is set on heroic, which means I'm able to earn pit raid Han. Han Solo. I've got him already at seven stars. And Solo, daring attacker that stacks criticals in his favor and always shoots first. He has very good, very good ability, scores a massive amount of damage. Um, but equally, on the other side of things, he's very, very easy to kill. Um, he's People find him useful, but he's actually very easy to kill. So I actually attack teams that have him because I can get rid of him in two shots. Um, but he's a very useful character. He can be a very useful character. But again, it gives you guild credits and gives you credits and... It gives you gear in boxes. You don't get all of this stuff, but you certainly get a little chunk of it, right? So for this particular raid, you'll go in there, we'll fight the Rancor um, over a two-day period, and you will get your stuff. Uh, this is the tank raid. So as we as we looked here, the rewards are Kenobi shards, and even if you do very very badly, you get six shards. This is how I was able to gear him up so quickly. But again, you can't do this without being a member of a guild, all right? And you need to be in a in a strong guild to get to the, the heroic level. I have never played anything other than heroic on these two, simply because I joined a guild that was already playing them. So I haven't played any of the other levels, all right? So get yourself in a guild, get a, get a character up to, to seven stars as quickly as you can, Probably going to be the Jedi Consular. It would be a good idea to start with. And get yourself taking part in these. Then we have the Sith Raid, which is relatively new. A lot more difficult than these guys. Um, we are not at the heroic level. We are currently on, I think, 4. Level 4 or level 5. I haven't had my go yet. See, we've got five, 
five goes. Uh, tier four, there we are. Um, so we're not we're not there yet. We're not in heroic, um, but still gear, credits, and money. All right. So it's very important that you join a guild so that you can get in here, you can get your stuff, and you can take part. In addition to this, there are the elements of territory battles, which we don't see here, and territory wars. So these are large scale fights. This is. This is a big fight between my guild, who we're being attacked. I wonder if any of my teams have been attacked yet. Nope, Wampa's still good. I think possibly, oh, one of my teams has gone. Yeah, my Empire team has gone, all right. So this is our guild fighting another guild. All right, and it's a, it's a, it's a one day setup, one day fight. We'll have a little, we'll all have a little go at each other. It's your team against their team. And when you win, you get stuff, including Zeta Mats. Why are we both 70? <gasps> Someone's left. Oh no, people didn't join. Join the blimmin' thing. What's wrong with you people? Territory Battles is similar, except you're against the computer. And uh, that's where you get this stuff that we looked at earlier. All right, that's how I'm able to unlock the Wampa or Yoda. And in the guild, there is also the guild exchange, so you're able to exchange gear. So let's have a look. So, so I've got six of these, but I need them, so I don't want to give them. Sorry, Napper. I've only got one of these. He can have that. I probably need 50 of them. 85, right. Get rid of that. There we go. So I'm helping my guys out. They're easy enough to get. You can have two of those. I know what I need those for. I can't give you any of those. I can't give you any of those. Look at that. Beautiful. 173. Take them away, mate. So I'm able to come in here and I'm able to give my guild the gear that they need so that they can boost their rosters so that overall we are better at raids and we are better at territory wars which means we get more credits for the shipment store to buy stuff, to upgrade our characters so that we become better, so on and so forth, so on and so forth. And that brings me to the end of this ridiculously long video. Um, I hope this explanation of the basics of the game has been useful. Um, a quick, a very quick recap on your characters. My suggestion is to focus on rebels specifically wedge and sorry specifically wedge and bigs as the beginning two okay remember to look for the little ship if you see a ship that character is also a pilot and you need these ships so that you can unlock zetas later okay i will record another one tomorrow focusing on on actual combat um, for that though, like I said, I need my Galactic War to be reset and that happens at midnight and noting that tomorrow's guild activity is Galactic War nodes, I don't want to do that until after this resets. So it's going to be in the evening. Um, I hope this has been useful. Um, I'll speak to you tomorrow.